Rahul Bat, greetings. Please say your name and where you're calling from and then your question. Uh, hello, I'm Matias from Chile again. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, nice, nice. Terrific, I should say. How are you guys? Doing my best. We're doing our best. Um, I remember you. You sent in three questions, didn't you? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, they were yes. great questions, by the way. Go ahead. Thank you, thank you. My question this time is this. What is the relationship between um, thought, feeling, and emotion? That's my question. I hope you've been doing well, guys, and thank you so much for the, for the answers and the info. You're thank you. Needed. All the thank way you. from Chile. That's great. Yeah, so the question is, what's the relationship between thoughts, feelings, and emotions? Um, excellent question. Remember that thoughts, um, contrary to what people might think or know, Thoughts are actually coming from something called a mental reservoir. This is where all thoughts are. It's like a big mainframe of thoughts and you connect to it by way of your brain. And you're literally pulling out formation through your mind into information to process it. Um, so a thought... Is, has a vibration, it has a frequency, it has a color, it has a weight, right? And it can be transported and transmuted throughout the cosmos, right? So that's how powerful thoughts are. And you can actually communicate with people telepathically as well. That's mind-to-mind -mind communication without any sound or voice, but without the voice box. So when we say the, the, the connection between them, it's like your brain, which is like the central processing unit, you know, like a computer has a, a brain, which is called a CPU. And this is where all the processing is done, all the calculations, all the arithmetic, anything to do with processing is handled by the CPU. So your brain is the same. And what it does is it processes, if you can tap into the outformation, and you can pick up these waves in terms of the thoughts because as you're walking down the street, for example, people could be sending thoughts to each other or a, a thought is traveling and you can pick it up because you are a radio, you're a receiver. So when you receive these thoughts, which can be negative or positive, and they can change your mood. So this is going into the feelings now. So you've received the thought or you've tapped into the mental reservoir and picked up a thought. This is why we say ideas, the same people can have the same idea and they'll be like, somebody might have had an invention, but you thought of it, but you thought about it, put it into the mental reservoir, but you didn't act on it and somebody else picked it up and then was able to run with it and bring it, say, to, to market. So when you pick up a thought, it can be positive or negative. And it can change your mood, it can change your vibration. And this is where the feelings get into it because a thought that is negative can bring down your vibration. A thought that is positive can raise your vibration. So this is where it's very important to not just deal with feelings because you can get a thought that gives you a particular feeling, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you should act on it, okay? And one of the things that you will hear people say a lot between, say, male and females is that females are more emotional, right? Because obviously we have left and right hemisphere of the brains. One is dealing with logics, like how the men term to process things. So we're very logical. We like to make things make sense and everything has to be in order. Whereas females, they are more creative. They are able to they can deduce something without having to go through that logic. And this is why you need both sides. And male and female both have both sides. So it's not a matter of, oh, I'm just going to be masculine and just deal with the logical side. You also have to tap into the creative and the other side. And so when you're with somebody, you're balanced because, you know, it's two parts of the logic and two parts of the, the creative. So going back to the question, when you get a thought, it can be a nice thought. And this is why sometimes we say that with a female, they can get carried away 
easily, as I did a, a video before, where they can be easily beguiled if they're operating off of emotions. And men as well, so it's not just a female thing, but the point is that I can say a word that triggers a thought, that triggers an emotion. And this is well understood by psychologists who they know, for example, about the subconscious. Yeah, I think it was um, um, the same brother that um, asked a question about the subconscious mind. This is, if I can get you to do something without you knowing that I've actually got you to do it, it's even easier for me to persuade you to do something. So I can send a message that triggers a thought in your subconscious memory and then you react on it. So not all the time the thoughts that you get you should act upon or the feelings that you get because you know this is what has been done in terms of some of the negative information and publicity that's been put through the media about say our master teacher knowing that those will trigger certain feelings in people to cause them to react negatively because the, the idea is to try and deter people from listening and and having the information but Unfortunately, your DNA, which is encoded, can override that. So regardless of how somebody tries to make you feel collectively, you know, we belong to a club, we believe this, we all accept this. So, you know, massage your ego or your, or your feelings to follow us. But if you're strong enough, you can resist that, that feeling or that temptation. So if you get a feeling of anger, you have to stop, analyse, why am I having this thought? Why am I having these emotions? And is it something I should react on? And a lot of the times, if you just stop, this is why, you know, we have, we have um, the master teacher, Panda Bab Yanun, has put out the book um, called the, the Mind. The Mind, because the mind is what governs that processing and is the most essential part of you because with the mind you can actually change people's minds completely if somebody was angry you could actually speak to them and change their mind and you can use the mind to communicate anywhere in the world this is how prayer is quite powerful as well because you can channel that energy and direct it to heal somebody across the world i hope that's answered that question um, but yeah so that's how you have to be able to deal with the thoughts to control how you feel about that thought to then react on how you act based on that um, based on that thought all right cool regarding the ethers this is from terry the ether terry jamal regarding the ethers how would you classify an albino whose parents are both black now when you say an albino just because they are an albino which just means that they have less pigmentation, they are still, uh, they are still a, a Nagaru or a, a Negroid or a black person because both their parents are black. This is where the story of, in the Bible, the, the religious books of Canaan, Canaan, that's what happened because he, was, he became an albino. Um, so when you say regarding the ethers, how would you classify an albino whose parents are both black? They're still a Nogaru. They just have a lack of melanin thereof. Um, but they're still, they're still Nogaru because they, they're still a Negro. They still have nine ether. Um, and ethers, you didn't actually specifically say nine ether. Ethers are in everything. It's just a matter of how much of the concentration it is in people or things, all right? So, um, yeah, when you say, how would you classify them? They're, they're an albino, but they still have the genetics of the two black parents. All right, let's move on. Um, do we come from the sun? Yes, we do. Um, es everyone comes from the sun in the sense that the original Negroid or Nogaru have sun heat genes, right? This is how we, our, our um, ancestors came about. So yes, we do come from the sun, which is why melanin is such an important element of us because the sun helps you to constantly produce more melanin or to activate it. 
Yes, yeah, so we do. Um, but when we say the sun, it sounds like one, but there are um, billions of suns term stars, right? And this is why many star systems exist and many um, beings, extraterrestrial beings, come from different star systems or star constellations. And um, so we as sun people, this is where our, our sun heat genes are what are responsible for the curl in our hair. And that's our uniqueness as Negroids on the planet. We're the only ones with, with hair that comes and curls in the follicles into a nine, the number nine. And we, we thrive in the sun. We're, you know, we, our melanin is more activated through the sun. What's the point of believing in higher power anyways? Um, that's from doing. See, when people make a, a, that's like a, it's not really a question, it's just like, well, it is a question. What's the point of believing in a high power anyway? We don't teach you to believe anything. So that's number one. That's not obviously relating to us as uh, Sabians or Nuwapians or Wu Sabat because we don't believe. We, we ask people, or shall I say, we, we don't believe as much um, because until you know something, then you may be in a state of belief. And when you say a higher power, again, that depends on what you mean by a higher power because you're trying, you're, you have a higher counterpart, you have a consciousness and an etheric being and you're trying to learn more about that power within yourself. And because you exist, your parents are proof that you exist because you come from them. And so they come from their parents and so on and so forth. So when you say a higher power, we're dealing with a time before you came into the physical humanoid form. That is a higher power, that's the etheric you that you need to tap into because this physical body is literally a skin suit made up of the elements and bacteria and so forth. So you're trying to tap into your inner being, the higher you, that's what you're calling your consciousness, right? Um, much love from Europe, much love. Was Adam and Eve black or white? This Adam and Eve story, again, this is a, a, a religious question because you only know about Adam and Eve from the biblical text. And there were different species and different, um, different what you would consider Adam and Eve. Because when you say the word Adam, this is why Wu Sabat has to break down the words. When you say the word Adam, um, from the Hebrew, that's Adama. All right, which means off the ground. But when you also look at it, when you start to study etymology, it also comes from the word Edom, all right? Edom, E-D-O-M. And this is where you get the word Edomites from because it's relating to red, it relates to blood. And it's, it's why when the Adamites were created, they were, they say they they blush or they're ready, ruddy red or reddish. Okay, that's referring to that word Adam or Edom. But there were different Adams, different experiments that were being done in the gravitation that led to the different species of, of humans on the planet. So, um, but even if you just took it from a very simple way that the dust of the ground was taken or the mud of the ground, that would be black mud. Um, but we know that, you know, that was... A religious story trying to explain something that scientifically is it's not possible to take mud or dust off the ground to create a man all right and so our scrolls we have the books that they go into detail in terms of what you're calling Adam and Eve because even if you just read it in the English right it says um, created he them and called their names Adam. So it was more, it's more, it's plural. All right. What's the number to call? The number to call is plus four four seven five three double nine six three double eight two. Okay. Um, join the official telegram group. Greetings from California. What does Wu Sabat teach to combat depression? Okay. Like depression, if you listen to the word, depressed, to press you down, to make you come down in vibration, ties into the previous questions about feelings. Sometimes you get overwhelmed 
and you start to feel out of control. You feel like you can't affect your surroundings and you may not have certain things um, and you're not able to do the things you want to do. And this energy of feeling helpless can make you depressed. And sometimes people have this inner feelings of like traumas that they may have experienced or even through epigenetics, meaning that it could be feelings that are coming through you by way of your ancestors that are in your DNA and in your genetics. So it, dep it depends on the cause of the depression, what's causing the depression. Also, people that try to temporarily suppress it, like by taking, um, you know, like uh, pills or drinking alcohol or smoking or smoking like marijuana or certain things that make you feel happy for a moment. And by doing that, all you're doing is delaying those feelings by suppressing them, but they will come back to the forefront. So it's about being able to deal with them and re-channeling the energy that's making you feel depressed. So it's all about energy at the end of the day because you can transform yourself and transform energy from one state to another. So if you feel yourself being pulled into these lower vibrations that have those negative moods by way of thoughts and feelings, it could even be music that you're listening to, you have to do something to counteract that and raise back that energy. So for example, you could do something that makes you feel good, like, you know, watch a movie that's happy, you know, listen to comedy that's gonna make you laugh, um, you know, do some exercise, do something that is positive, that will even listen to positive music that will raise your vibration. Um, and yeah, it could be just the things you're in, taking into your vessel. So change your diet, for example, do some meditation, some relaxation, um, speak to people that have a high vibration, be around them. They will lift you back up in terms of your vibration from, the, um, from that depression, yeah? Remember to share this video. You can um, share it through WhatsApp, Telegram, all the social media, Facebook, Instagram. Spread the word. We gotta get Wu Sabat. This is the Wu Sabat energy that we wanna spread around the world to keep people feeling high, positive, getting their answers to their questions they may have had all their life. That's given them mental concern. What what physical proof do we have that we originated from from other planets? Um, well. Physical proof goes back to DNA and goes back to ancestors and goes back to recorded information that has been passed down from generation to generation. You still have things like, you know, the pyramids that are still standing. You have many structures around the world and you have ancient cultures. You can watch ancient civilizations and talk to people that have been around for a very long time where things have been passed down from generation to generation. And Pretty much every culture that you name that is ancient, um, Zoo Aztecs, the Mayans, the Hindus, the Chinese, the Dogon, the Egyptians, the Sumerians, every single one of them talk about people coming from somewhere else to seed the planet. So you have to go by recorded evidence that it's available. All right. I would like to hear, I would like to hear, um, what you have to say about the book of jubilees i mean that's such a vague question i would like to hear what you think about the book of jubilees there are many 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 books that have been left out of the current version of the bible especially the king james version so you know there's the book of wars the book of generations the book of enoch the maccabees there are many many books this is what we're trying to say to people that just because you hold a book in your hand that was compiled and put together, you know, by, say, the Nicaea Council, it doesn't mean that that's the most authentic or the original one, because there are many, many, many books left out. Um, and they tell you stories about events and things that took place relating to that question before about things that are not mentioned in the Bible. So in order for you to to have a broader mind and to know more, you have to study and read those 
those things that were before. So the book of Jubilees is, is just one of those books. Um, why in the Bible of Revelation is it some um, similar to what is happening in the real world now? Yeah, that's because the, the books are copies of copies of copies. Now, our ancient ones, right, as Nuwapians, we're known as ontologists, meaning that we predate what you're calling time. And when you've been around a very, very long time, you pretty much watch events and record events happen to the point where you can actually foretell what the future is going to be. Um, to someone who doesn't know that, like for example, let me just give you a simple example. If you sat down in a location and just watched, like say for example, buses or cars, and you watch that for a week, you will get to notice patterns like what times the buses come, the people that come at particular times and they go to work at particular time, you know, how the weather changes. You learn so much information and if you watch that daily for a week, for a month, for a year, you're pretty much going to be able to go, okay, the bus is going to come at that time, that person is going to do that. And so, um, as ontologists, we were recording things way, way before. So, the books that then copy those events, um, which sometimes you have beings that are able to time travel, meaning that time is not linear as we think it is. It doesn't just move in one direction and goes forward. That is something that the um, yeah, that's something that the um, the clocks have made you to think that time moves in in a linear fashion. It's actually circular and. Each, its uh, cycle is still there. This is why you have different timelines and you can go back and forth uh, between what people would term the past and the future. So some of this stuff has already been recorded by people who were able to travel forward and come backwards. So that's how some of the stuff in the book of Revelations, as you say, um, but the funniest thing is if you actually look at it, most of the things in the book of Revelation have already happened, all right? Um, can you speak on the Nagaru home planet also? Yeah. Okay. Oh, someone's showing us some love. Crimson Vestro. I appreciate love of your donation. Um, yeah, um, any title, albinism and the different skin tones. Absolutely. This is what we were just saying with that question about being an albino. Um, because there are different types of albinos. And this happens because of the scrambled in genetics. Because when you study genetics, you can find out that you have to wait over a period of time. In fact, four generations. And it's normally in the fourth generation that if there are any... Um, traits in, in, in the genes that will manifest in the fourth generation. This is why that story with Noah, it was like, cursed be Canaan, right? But people, because Canaan was Ham's son, not himself, and people used to say that it was black people because the word Ham meant black, from Ham, which is, you know, Chemet, right? But it wasn't Ham that was cursed, it was his son, because they knew that that will manifest in the fourth generation. So yes, that albinism ties into it. But then there was a further curse. It's not that he was an albino that was the problem. The problem was when he was cursed with leprosy. And the leprosy is what started to basically um, destroy him. This is why he couldn't live under the sun. He had to move to climates that were more conducive for his skin, because as you know, people without, with less melanin will get skin cancer easily. So that's why, you know, um, they move to climates that are, are cold. So if you look at where Europeans live, you know, in terms of the equator, they're always living in, in the hills, hills areas or places that are cooler, more conducive, not where the temperature's really high, like in Africa and so forth. Or even if they are, they would be more around, like, the cooler parts um, of Africa. So yes, you're right, that does tie in. And thanks um, for the donation. Much appreciated, much appreciated. Um, okay, let's keep going. What was the next question? All right, let's have a look. Remember to share the video. I've covered that one, covered that one. 
Um, sorry, this uh, adverts. Okay, um, trying to catch up, trying to catch back up. Wow, lots of questions coming in. This is good. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to catch up where I was. Um, okay, there we are. Right, can you speak on the Nagaru home planet? Also, is it true when you translate the Bible into Hebrew or its original language, it tells a different story than taught? Than taught? Yes, that's from Mr. Gross, I think. Um, right, when you said the Nagaru's home planet, you have to remember that we all come from different places and different planets. We don't all come from the same place. However, our ancestors original home planet would be what you're calling risk, where the master teacher, Parnabab Yanun, Dr. Malachi Z. York, incarnation is from. So some people are from, you know, from, from different places. Some people are from Mars or other planets and not everyone's from the same place. But the, the fact that life started from our ancestors as the Natharu or the Nagaru, every other life form, comes by way of those genetics and then they spread to different um, star systems and star constellations and then different hybrids like much like on the planet today right you could easily and it has been confirmed that the the africans will be first and then everybody else is come from everybody or other races come from the africans then they all mix now you have different people all over the world and um, but the original dna will go back to the africans we have another caller live Rahul Bhatt, please say your name, where you're calling from, and then your questions, please. Greetings, it's Travis Sardam. I'm from Belize. Oh, Rahul Bhatt, greetings. Yeah. Yeah, my grandfather used to teach me a lot of stuff, like stuff that you talk about, but he didn't knew anything about uh, the Usabath or anything like that. So I wanted to know how did he knew stuff like that, and he didn't, he didn't have no, no knowledge of it and stuff like that. So he, like, have me on that path for me to like look at stuff like this that you guys are talking about and stuff from from i was young you know so i wanted to know how he, he already died already so i wanted to know how he knew about it right thank you for the question this is why we keep explaining to people that wusaba is a genetic doctrine he knew about it because it's already in his dna and his coding and coding most of us know about it already. It's just that you have to activate it and um, it's been suppressed and hidden. But the time has come when you're connecting back and your DNA is reactivating based on, you know, remembering. So it's a remembering tool because it's actually already in your DNA. This is one of the technology of our ancestors. They were able to encode it in our DNA, knowing that when men or man was able to catch up with learning and studying because before, you know, um, DNA and genetics, because remember, people used to get away with all kinds of crimes until when they started to study DNA and realize how they can find DNA in a crime that was committed many, many years ago and then trace it and catch a person 20 years down the line. So. DNA is our ancestors' technology, and they knew that man was going to get to the point where they would decipher the DNA. When they carried out the Human Genome Project, this is what they were able to do. They were able to now map up the whole 24,000, you know, um, cells and, 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 in, and the DNA strand to catch and find out what every single, you know, gene does or, or can do. And some of them, they're still yet to, to figure out. But yeah, it's, it was in his DNA. And we know this because it's passed on through genetics, epigenetics as well. Epigenetics is where you still connected to your whole line of ancestors and are still able to tap into that information once you get switched on. Yeah, that's how he knew and he was teaching it. And we're teaching it and you're going to start remembering things once you start to um, tap into it. 
Um, okay, where are we? Okay, the second part of um, the question I was uh, reading before, it says, when you translate the Bible into Hebrew, it's not the same. That's right. This is why it's important, especially with today, that you have tools, smartphones, where you can get translations of the word for word from the, say, the King James Version. Um, and so when you read something that in the English is, say, singular, but in the Hebrew is plural, like the Elohim, which comes into English as God, that's confusing you straight away because when you're reading, it's not making sense. In the singular, but in the plural, it makes sense. When it says, let us, us is a plural, create man in our, our is a plural, image and our likeness, you see. So when you're reading it in English, it, you're like, who's the our? Who's the us? But in the Hebrew, it's, it's, it's very clear. Um, but the Hebrew itself is taken from ancient languages. That's why it's a mix, a remix of a remix of a remix. It's, it's getting watered down, watered down and watered down. So by the time you get to the English, which is not even a language, but a dialect composed of words from different languages, it's, a com it's confusing and the vibration and the tones are also confusing. All right, so it's important to learn the, the languages. And this is why you have to learn Miss Batia or Sabaic, our language, which is the first language on the planet, which resonates with you and your vibration and it helps protect you from the confusion of the, of the Babel, which we call Bible. All right. Okay, uh, let's carry on. We'll cover that one. Yes, we'll cover that one. I'm a new follower, Matthew Magnus. Welcome, welcome, Rahul Bat. Um, we, we, we have to clarify this. We're not, we're not followers, right? We, we, we're actually all working together because we, we, like the master says, don't follow me. Don't say you're my follower because he wants people to be beside him. We're walking together because when you follow someone, that means that if they go astray, you're going to go astray. Um, and you can be left behind if you're behind them. Or if, if you're trying to be too far ahead, then they can leave you and you don't even know. So we walk together, all right? We walk beside him because he recognises that we are all gods. Just He has to just groom us and bring us back to our supreme balance. We've got another live call, so let's take that. Hey, Rahul Bhatt, greetings. Greetings, greetings. Yes. Yes. Uh, this is Terry Jamal. Greetings. I'm calling in from, yeah. from Zambia. So my question is, uh, I was reading some of the scrolls and watched some of the videos by the master teacher, and then I came across where uh, human genetic, like the DNA, like we have a chunk DNA. Mm -hmm. So my question is like, what? What was the purpose of that junk DNA? Was it a purposely deactivated so that uh, humans could not have certain abilities? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically, like, what's the story behind the junk DNA? Excellent. So the question is, what's, what's junk DNA? Um, this, the term junk DNA is what the, the Western scientists term it. Like I was saying, where they're trying to decipher you know, your DNA, and there are certain parts that they say is, is redundant, it's not being used, it's just there, and they call it junk DNA. It's only junk when they don't know about it, but this is what we're saying where, when you start to study Wul Sabat and start to remember, that DNA will be activated, and then you will be able to utilize it more. So this is what they're referring to as junk DNA. Um, it's junk to someone, but it's not junk to us. So by reading the scrolls and reactivating that DNA, um, it will bring up more abilities, more powers, more things in you. How to deal with emotions. Um, that's from Sage. So, um, yeah, sorry if I don't, because the thing moves quite quickly, the, the chat. So. I may miss a question. You can just ask it again if I miss it, right? But Sage, how do you deal with emotions? Emotions, you have to remember that E stands for energy. 
and motion is moving. So when you say emotion, we're saying energy in motion. This goes back to what I was saying about when you get a thought, then that gives you a particular vibration and a feeling. And that feeling then can be put into motion. So, you know, say for example, um, somebody called you a name and you react to that name negatively and then you, you decide you're gonna get angry and do something, you know, maybe physically attack the person or whatever. That is you now putting that energy into motion, whereas you can transform energy. So how to deal with emotions, first of all, is to recognize what it is, like really have the conversation. Where is this emotion coming from? How did I get it? And um, how, do I, how do I analyze it to see what it's doing? How is it making me feel? And try and deal with logics and facts before you react on that emotion. Right, once again, we want to say appreciate love to Lavi, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Thanks for the donation, much, much appreciated. I just wanted to say thank you for all of this information. I can't wait to attend one of your seminars. I live in Germany and my parents are from the Kingdom of Congo. Peace. No, thank you, thank you. Um, you know, without you, without all of you on this live right now, in the chat, asking us the questions, um, you know, we wouldn't be here. Um, so we thank you. And it's very important to realize that we, Wu Sabat is so above everything else in terms of, you know, like religion was a tool that was actually concocted by these Pleiadians that passed themselves off as gods, as extraterrestrials, and they used that to control people on the planet but it's starting to have no effect. People are awakened from that. And when that happens, they have to think about another way of implementing the spell to keep people um, you know, spellbound and under control. So it's very important that you upgrade yourself, that you upgrade yourself by, um, by Wu Sabat. And you know, asking the questions is one of those ways you can do it. Um, right, let's go back to the chat. King, I've lost the... Uh, it's gone again. Give us a moment to figure out what's going on here. Um, the chat's gone. Okay, okay so... Um, okay, I've got it back. Yeah, <laughs> we can swap. <laughs> Look at us all Apple, man. We've got to, uh, they should be sponsoring us for this. All right, so let's go back to where, where we were. Let's um, go, go, where we are, live chat. Okay, there we are. All right, uh, how do we know if we are being stalked versus a coincidence. All right. The, the word is what tells you. Um, the word co means two, right? Two times. When something happens once and then it happens again, that's a coincidence, twice. That's why you hear the word used like in co-pilot, a co-pilot, yeah, because there's two people flying the plane. So if it happens more than two times, it's no longer a coincidence. This is how the master has taught us. So when something keeps happening over and over and over again, more than twice, it's no longer a coincidence. So that's how you will know. And I guess um, if somebody's stalking you, they would be doing it constantly and all the time. And then you will know by way of that word, co. All right. Uh, I'm trying to catch up again. I've always... Um, hold on, I'm going too fast. Okay, the question is, wow, there's so many questions. Um, I'm trying to go back to where I was. I'm probably just going to find, how long does the journey to become fully awoken take? Can it be instant or one has to go through the process of shadow work? 
And if so, how do you know you fully awoken? Yeah, um, these are terms that people are using in terms of, gosh, sorry, I, I, I've got so many questions. I just saw that one. So you, th these terms like shadow work is, is, are terms that people are using to deal with working on yourself. Um, and when you say shadow work, it makes it seem like, you know, it's something bad because the shadow is always like, ooh, scary and dark and all of that. But um, the thing about being awoke is like, you never stop learning, right? It says to seek knowledge from, from cradle to grave. So it's not for you to say, oh, I have a right. It's like saying, how do you know when one becomes spiritual? Because the word spiritual is thrown around a lot as well. People are like, oh, I'm not religious, but I'm very spiritual. And when they're saying they're very spiritual, it's like by what measurement are you using to say you are very spiritual? Because, you know, there are very many there are levels of spirituality in terms of what you know, but you never, you never know, you just keep going. Um, and really, if it was an exam, then you would need someone who is a spiritual master. This is why Pana Babyanun is a spiritual master as well as you know, a, a spiritual guide, somebody that will guide you and raise you up in degrees. And, on, and you will never know what you're, you're capable of because your potential, you don't know your full potential. And so it, it depends on how you're measuring it because just because you can do certain things doesn't mean that um, you're more spiritual or more woke than the other person, all right? Crimson, again, we want to appreciate, love your donation. Um, that's a deep one. In fact, this question was asked to the master teacher. What is the purpose of life? And he was like, whoo, that's a big question. I've been dealing with a crippling ex existential crisis that led me to the search of knowledge, but it's turnalistic. Um, the way the master teacher, Pana Babianun, Dr. Malachi Z, you answered the question is that the purpose of life is to discover your hidden potential right because you don't know what you're capable of and so what you're doing in life is learning and discovering your hidden potential and it relates to the previous question in that you never stop learning and when you graduate from this physical realm this physical world to the next realm then you're learning something new in that existence so um yeah Try and learn and discover more about yourself. Now, having said that, another question that relates to that, that people ask a lot is, what is success, right? Success is defined in many different ways. Some people think success is accumulating a lot of material things, big houses, cars, money, and all of that. And some people get that and they're still not satisfied or happy or not feeling successful. So the, one of the best definitions that the master also uses is that success is the um, realization of a worthy idea, idea or idea, meaning that if you have an idea that you're constantly working towards every day, then you're already a success because you've, you've defined what your success is and that's what life is about to achieve things. Now, collectively, we have to wake up humanity with this knowledge, with this information. So once you understand your purpose, you have an individual purpose and you have a collective purpose and we have a duty to humanity to raise everyone's consciousness so that we can move into what we call the galactical community where we can talk and travel and deal with other beings in different galaxies and so forth. So it starts with you first learning, transforming yourself inside out and then finding your purpose, and then let's come together and work together, all right? We've got another caller. Greetings, Rahul Bhatt. Please say your name, where you're calling from, and your question, please. Hi, greetings, it's Rahul Bhatt. How are you? Okay. Doing my best, doing my best. It's a pleasure. It's a great to hear from you again. 
This Likewise. is Kaiser. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I I have seen um certain beings, Egyptians. I wanted to know more about who was Queen Aphrodite, who are they calling Aphrodite? Sure. And uh, are there Egyptian, like, all around still to this day, like, what bloodline, what part of the family are they? Because sure. I'm a little confused sometimes. Right. Some people say they're Anunnaki. Some people say they're us. Some people are risky. And so, but uh, specifically, uh, those, those uh, and you can name them, also Tahuti. So there's many other uh, Egyptians I'd like to know. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for the question. So Aphrodite is a, it's a person that has got many, many names. And one of the popular names is Isis. She's known as Isis. She's known as Arashtat or Ashtat. She's known in many cultures by different, different names. Um, and that's because she was quite prominent as the wife of Osiris and um, obviously their son, Har Haru or Horus, Hara. And um, she's very, very instrumental because she's part of the feline order for the feminine. So that's, that's who they're referring to. She's known as, um, she's known by many, many, many names. All right. And um, when you say where are the Egyptians and who are the Egyptians, Again, the word Egyptian comes from the Greeks, from Aegyptos or Egyptos, which really was describing people that were coming into Egypt, like the Phoenicians, um, who were getting burnt by the sun. And that's what the word translates as burnt faces, because the sun burnt them, because, you know, these are tying into the Canaanites. And so that's where the word Egyptos or Egyptians come from. The natives didn't refer to themselves as Egyptians. So um, we are the, the descendants. When you say, where are they today? We're here everywhere. We're walking around because our DNA goes back to them. And so, um, but they've also obviously dug up and found, you know, they've dug up and found tombs and Osiris and have taken DNA. And, and if they find one and they say that person exists, where they used to teach you in religion that the Egyptians are pagans and it's mythology, um, you now have proof by way of the findings and the pyramids and the mummies and the DNA. And when you find one, then that means the, the wife would exist and the child would exist. So the Egyptians are walking all around the planet today. Um, once you are rekindled, then you start to remember who and what you are. I've got another call. Okay, let's move on to the next caller. Wow, four callers in line. So let's try and make this quick. Um, please say your name, where you're calling from, your question, please. Yes, sir. Gratitude to homeless God. I appreciate love this time. My name is Malachi. I am from Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh, I have a two-part question. My first question, uh, my first part of the question is, um, I wanted to ask, how can one practice Wusabat through meditation? And what is your perspective on a time lapse? So what's the last part? What's my... Yes, sir. What is your perspective on a timeline shift? Oh, okay. On the timeline shift, yeah? Timeline shift. Yeah. Um, yeah, the thing is that you said, how can one practice Wu Sabat from meditation? Uh, it's the other way around. Wu Sabat is the entire culture that everything you do within it, such as meditation, relaxation, propagation, teaching, cleaning yourself inside, outwards, doing the chants, there are many aspects of the culture, you know, speaking the language, how you dress, how you get married, how you get, you know, when you're crossing over, the rituals that take place. That's all Wu Sabat. Wu Sabat has everything you need to live and practice your culture. So, um, yeah, you would more um, meditate as part of the teachings of Wu Sabat. And in terms of timeline, um, Again, I try to give a, a basic example about how, you know, like you're, di you're on different timelines because you're going in circles or cycles. So somebody may have been here before and I've come back again. Some people are new souls in the sense that they've never been down here before. 
and um, the new souls came um, from 1973 to 2003. But anyone prior to that, that date um, may have been here up to 9,000 times before, um, and you have up to 24,000 times. So you also are existing as a multi-dimensional being on different timelines and time shifts. And so when you shift from one cycle to the next, let's say, it, it's almost like you're in the same space but on a different vibration or a different existence. So you could wake up tomorrow or um, high intelligent beings can stop time right now and freeze you, operate on you, and you carry on as if nothing has happened. So there's a lot to do with, um, with, with the time shift. And then obviously you've got the planetary shifts, you've got the dimensional shifts. Um, there are so many shifts that are taking place. It could literally be you blink your eye and, and then something's changed or you wake up and you're a completely different person. So I hope that's answered the question if I got that right. We've got another person on the line. Rahu Bhatt, greetings. Please state your name, where you're calling from and your question, please. Rahul Bhatt, yeah. My name is Paolo. Rahul I'm from Dallas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Please, uh, what can you explain about heavenly maid or spiritual content? And um, is it okay to appeal to our heavenly maid as spiritual husband to my own culture? Sorry, uh, I didn't... Uh, what did you say? I didn't hear the word. You said... Yeah, heavenly maid and spiritual husband. Oh, you said heavenly something like that because right. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. because based on my culture, they talk about saying um, it's good for you to appeal to your heavenly base, and if you have a spiritual husband, it can be because for you not to, you know, have a good husband or break your marriage. So yes. You have to be appealing or disconnect yourself from him. So I want to know how true that is because it's causing a lot of chaos in my culture, and people are like, no, there's nothing like that. You know, right. I just want to know. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, that term um, is really referred to as having a soulmate um, because, as I was just explaining, I'm just trying to see if I have. We have, uh, we actually have a scroll, um, a part taruk called soulmates. Um, what it, what it you have to realize is that even though you have your physical suit, you have a spirit and a soul, and you have a counterpart. Now, the point of getting in a union with someone is really to meet your soulmate, and so that the two of you become one, and then you produce what we would call um, supreme beings. So there is such a thing as a soulmate, even though you're calling it a heavenly mate, um, because obviously the word heaven it's a religious concept and it's talking about something from somewhere else. But we know that we're really dealing with souls that are vibrating somewhere else. So, yes, the person that you're with, you may have, you may have been in previous lives together or like they're your counterpart and you need to come together as one. Um, so, uh, you know, I do hope that's, that's answered the question. But there is a part of that called soulmates that goes into more, more details about finding your soulmate, it should really be about that, not just like randomly um, getting with people, because even the elders, they're used to time everything to make sure that people were compatible um, in terms of the alignments of the planets, the stars, because certain energies would then come down at that particular moment. This, this is what you can refer to as well. So it's about knowing when and who to come together with so that you produce the right offspring. We've got another caller. I have to get through some of this quickly. This is why we say join the Telegram group because we can continue answering your questions and obviously do the online courses and things like that to bring you up to speed. All right, caller, please say your name and uh, where you're calling from and your question. Uh, hey, this is Kian from the US. Hey, where are we back? Hey, I wanted to know if you had some insight about Marshall Applewhite in the Heaven Gates cult, and if so, like, can you give like a little bit of detail about that? Sure. 
So yes, again, um, there are many, many um, cultures or well, not even communities that got together to break away from what you know we will call the matrix and basically go and do their own thing and um, live according to how they want to live. And um, Heaven Gate, Heaven's Gate was one of those communities, um, but because they ended up committing suicide. Because sometimes you have these leaders that, um, will, you know, will, will basically take people and teach them and then they will go off on a tangent. Or sometimes it could be a conspiracy because when you study that particular one, and most of them, by the way, have been mainly Christian groups. And that's because the doctrine of the Christians is about somebody coming and dying and sacrificing their life and so some of these groups they they have that doctrine of it's okay to commit suicide which is not really um, what that you know that whole story was about but I'm saying that this particular group you can tell that they they all apparently took cyanide and committed suicide and died but when you start to do studies and research there are things that stick out like if you know anything about how you will behave if you took cyanide, you wouldn't be able to just lie down and go to sleep because it's a very distressing type of way to die. And so when, when you, know, you look at how this took place, it was obvious that there was something else going on, some type of conspiracy. And um, some of them were wearing brand new Nike trainers, for example, and it was like, why would you go out and buy brand new trainers, Nikes, and then take cyanide and lie down and, and commit suicide? So there's a lot of questions to that, but ultimately um, they use those types of situations to deter people from a community such as ours, where we had land, we were living often by each other and practicing our culture and our way of life, which meant that you know, they wouldn't be able to control us. And so they were saying, oh, don't join or don't go to that community because they're going to commit suicide and die. And that's not something that in our culture, it's not something that we do, you know. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of relating to that. There are others, there's Jim Jones and there were other people. And it makes people feel afraid to learn or know more about say, our culture and what we teach, but we are not contained in one place. We are worldwide. We were not just in one place as, you know, and to be honest, the racist people that were trying to say to people that we're a cult and the master teacher was like, yes, add the last letters, culture. We're practicing our culture. Um, and we never fit any of the things that they try to say, these types of... Uh, communities did. We never had an enclosed, you know, there was no gate, like Heaven's Gate. There was, it wasn't a gated community. We had a pylon, there was no gate. But they, when they tried to draw parallels between, say, us and these other groups, these are the things they will say. They're a gated community, they're going to commit suicide. And it's like, if you're racist, wouldn't you love if we actually did do that? So, yeah, it's just some, something that they use to deter people. But also, it is an important point that you should study, learn, investigate any community or any person before you get involved. And that's what the master teacher, Pana Babianun, teaches us. Even there was a book called um, The Family Guide where, you know, he goes into great detail of how you should investigate any organisation or any person before you get involved. All right, we've got more callers, so I'm going to have to move on. Greetings, Rahul Bat. Please state your name, where you're calling from, and... Um, Ask your question. Hey, how you doing, sir? This is a uh, Crimson Maestro. I was the guy hey. that was just in the chat not too long ago. Yeah, I, I decided to, to uh, call in. I had a, I had another question I had gifted not too long ago, but uh, I figured I might as well just ask it in person. Thank well, you for your for your gifts, by the way. Thank you for the knowledge, sir. I, I much appreciate and must reciprocate the energy. Yeah. Um, my name is Brinson Pendleton. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, the question I have. Being that we're the only sentient creatures on this planet that pays to exist, what is it, if anything, can we do to, to make a change? Because this planet 
naturally gives us everything that we need to survive off of it. But yet, throughout the known galaxy, or from what we can tell, we're the only sentient creatures to actually pay to exist. Why is that? Yeah, um, be because we've been bamboozled <laughs> is the simple answer. And it's, it's, a, it's a great question because even in this day and time where we now have all this knowledge, we have a guide, we have Parnabab Yanun, um, where, and this might be a bit controversial, but when um, there was, you know, Kanye West said that slavery was a choice. Now, people got upset with that. And I also disagree that if he's referring to in the past, the slavery in the past was not by choice. But today, a lot of us are actually enslaved by choice because we have we have all the information, we know things, and yet we still choose to do things that don't make sense. Most people are going back into what they would call the Jim Crow laws. Most people are, you know, giving in willingly. Most people are more preoccupied with material things, with, you know, twerking and, you know, acting the fool than to focus on being that supreme being that you're supposed to be. And that's by way of these, you know, these lower vibrations that the powers that be have led you astray. And so when you're awake and you start to teach people and say, look, here's all this information to upgrade you. Because like the mobile phones, they get upgraded all the time. And the reason they get upgraded is because they're gonna have more functionality, more features, they're able to do more things. But when it comes to us, as you say, as sentient beings, where we're supposed to be able to live in natural nature with free, you know, water, free air, free food, um, we, we, we have been made to feel that it's okay to destroy natural nature and then bottle water and sell it. <laughs> or like poison the foods that we, it's just, as you say, it doesn't really make sense. And um, more people are getting more and more regret, they're regressing back to the point where they're just like food. They're gonna become food for these extraterrestrials because you're not acting like a, an intelligent supreme being. So yeah, it's an excellent question. Um, it's because we are not, activated and this is what Wusapai is supposed to do to make you wake up and start to use nine mind nine mind reasoning got another caller all right join the telegram group if your question is not fully answered we can carry on and there are other mods on the chat in the chat that can continue uh, I think we've got um, another person on, on the line please state your name where you're calling from and your question please yeah Yes, gratitude. Thank you so much, Ken, for answering my first question about uh, the queen in Egypt. I appreciate that. Now I know. I never knew we're all around the world. Wusabat is yes, right. great. You know? Ta -ta -ta. That means thank you. Yes. Gratitude. Yes. Gratitude, brother. Uh, so i like to watch also um, a friend of mine. I could send the link. He does astro travel on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And he talks about the Yao Jua. He says he goes and, uh, you know, they showed him on the Predator, the Yao Jua, that, uh, the beings that they hunt. So I wanted to know what are the Yao Jua and as they call them in the Predator. And he does uh, astral traveling at night. So he does practicing and traveling. I'll mm -hmm. send it to the message. Okay. But um, those are the two things. Uh, you know, that, that being with a dreadlock, you might be able to show a picture, but... Yeah, I know, you know the ones you're talking about. Understand. Yeah. Yeah, apparently they're the hunters. So there's so many extraterrestrials we don't Tua. know about. Maybe if there's one you would like to teach me about as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, there are many. In fact, look out, we're doing some <laughs> videos coming very soon on them. So, excellent. So, yeah, the, um, the, the predator being, again, um, they've captured many beings by way of, you know them getting sick or, you know, they crash and they're injured and so on. So um, those beings are they're from Andromeda, they're, they're Andromedan beings, those predator beings. And there are so many um, different extraterrestrials. So astral projection, yes, people, like I keep saying, 
you can travel to these different realms, right? There are nine realms in terms of the ether. Um, and we only say nine because nine to the ninth power of nine, whether we're dealing with numbers, physically, um, genetics, etc. So nine to the ninth, nine to the ninth power of nine is the highest. And there are beings on different um, realms. The, there are beings that can shape shift. Now, when you're talking about the highest beings, our ancestors, the Natharu, they are able to slow down their vibration from being a pure energy etheric being to coming down and taking on a physical form. And they're so advanced that even the crafts they use, some crafts are actually organic crafts. That's how you know they're not from here because they don't need aerodynamics. But when they come into an atmosphere that requires aerodynamics, they're able to morph um, and shape shift. It's the same. When you read the Black Book, it explains that, you know, once you've elevated to a certain level, um, you're able to do that. But yet yeah, there's many beings in different star constellations and different star systems. And the reason they look differently is because of the atmosphere and the environment that you're in. So, for example, um, on risk, they have three suns. So if you live in an environment where there are three suns and the planet risk itself goes its trajectory goes through the three suns. So at every side, there's always sunshine. So, you know, you're going to have a different genetic makeup. So the color green, for example, where you see like Osiris depicted in, in green and other beings and to topaz or like different colors is because of the environment that they're in. Some, in, some, um, some beings like the predator, they, they're like descendants of, or grasshoppers are their descendants. Mantis, there are many um, what we would call insects on this planet that are not from here. Because again, when this planet had um, certain parts destroyed, it was being reconstructed or terraformed. And they had to bring different plants, different trees, different insects to, to get the ecology working and to provide like the right atmosphere. So we live in a biosphere with many different atmospheres that are conducive for different types of beings. So there are beings that live in the sea and there are beings that can come onto land and go back to the sea. There are beings that only live in, on the land. We are aquatic beings because we breathe water, we, we drink water, we have to bathe in water. We are actually reptilian as well as having the, the Natharu genetics within us, as well as being a mammal that evolved, you see. So there are different, different types of beings. And the, the movie, The Predator, actually showed you this being. And it's like, how do you come up with a drawing or a character like that? This taps back into what I was saying about the mental reservoir and you being able to pull information or out formation into information. So, yeah, you can travel and go and visit some of these realms. And when you astral project, you have to know what you're doing because you're literally coming out of your skin suit and you have to know how to get back in because it's, there is a risk you can get trapped or certain beings or entities can actually steal your essence or trap you. This is why it's very important to be protected. And um, some of us are protected by way of the energy and the force fields and the things we do to protect ourselves from these beings. So they, they will leave you alone, they won't touch you. Um, but if you don't know what you're doing and you're not protected, you can get lost out there. All right, um, let me answer some more questions before any more calls come in. Um, I think that, yeah, the Telegram group, um, has the link has been posted again because if we don't get to answer your question today, we can answer it next week or you can just carry on and ask it in the group. All right. Um, greetings. I think I have to ask again, as we, as I was born in a veil, I am wondering if there's any spiritual meaning to that. Uh, I was born in a veil. I'm not quite sure what you mean by you were born in a veil, so you may have to just clarify that. That's Kali. Um, yeah, I don't know what you mean by that. Please expound. Um, then we go on to, how do you know that was the first la, la hedge, the first language? Okay, 
how do you know is because you, there are, you know, um, things have been found. People have been speaking it. If you look at all the oldest languages, they tie back into it. We actually have, um, we do have the language scroll that shows you how all languages come from it. So therefore, you can tell by way of um, what has been found. So people will say they are hearing certain words, um, hearing certain words in the language and they say, oh, you're copying it from, from us. There's some scrolls like this. What is God's language? First language. When you go through these small scrolls and we have now um, the Miss Batia books, right, which give you the evidence. The actual, there's a thicker big book that we call Parla Hed um, Shalel Wakot, which is the language of time. We also have that that gives you information and evidence. I think I found it, if I can just grab hold of it. Um, right, this, this book here, right? This goes into um, the different things that have been found. This is my personal copy, so um, I'm gonna try and see if I can, it's falling apart as you can see. Like, so these are the tablets that have been found, like the Sabian plate, for example, there are many, many tablets and things that have been discovered to be the oldest um, inscription of languages. So when you read them and study them, you will find out that they predate what you're calling um, languages today, like Hebrew, Arabic, because Arabic's um, only um, 1,400 years old. Hebrew, what they're calling Hebrew, goes back 4,000 years. Um, and you can go back to, you know, hieroglyphics, cuneiform, which predate all of them. And then you find those in Misbatia or Sabaic, which is older than them. Okay, so let me keep going. Uh, oldness God, am I allowed to call that number to ask a question? Yeah, of course. I just want to say thank you for the people like you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I thank you. I just wish every African can know what you know, even if it's just 10% of what you know. That's still enough. Absolutely. This is why everyone that is somewhere that you have people around you, it's your duty to become that teacher, that person that will help spread Wusabat in your area. And once it starts from you, it will spread and then, you know, it carries on that way. So um, what I know is <laughs> it's a tiny bit compared to what the master teacher, Panda Babi Anun, knows. And this is what he's saying, that all he really wants us to do is to, to listen and learn and let him teach us and raise us in degree. But most of the time, because of the junk that we've taken all our lives, we, we, have, we suffer from something called I think. Everyone says, I think this, I think that, I think I, 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 and that, that I, the ego, um, stops people from humbling themselves to just study, listen, and learn from a master teacher. And, um, you know, it's, it's very sad that we don't have him amongst us, and that is the ultimate goal, is to have him free. But like I was saying, we seem to be regressing, some of us, because... We're doing things that don't even make sense voluntarily now. It's not even anyone holding you to ransom. We, 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 we eat bad foods, we go to bad places, we, we do things that we know are not good for us. Um, and even when people have the opportunity, you know, celebrities and people that have money to, to go somewhere where they can be free and supported, um, they, they tend not to, they wanna stay you know, in America or in the West, and then um, they, you know, they get they get subjected to all the injustices and things like that. So, you know, let's let's try to uh, spread wolves about. Okay, um, the incarnated one said that there wouldn't be enough Nuwapins to fill a Volkswagen. Yet I am Musbat to unravel this riddle. Mm. Yes. Um, but he also says, take my words to the world and um, let my words be known. Spread Wusabat worldwide. 
So you're right, it is a riddle. Um, meaning that it, it's a paradox, right? Um, a paradox is something that, like you say, we have to, we have to unravel the riddle. Um, I guess he will have to answer and explain that one. Um, I think the sentiment is that, as you can see, I used to think everybody loves the truth and wants the truth. But what you come to find out when you awake is that you become <laughs> isolated, you become the, not a, the person that everyone looks like, like you're crazy. So it's like amongst your friends, amongst your family, you become, you know, few people that would actually resonate with you. So I guess that kind of ties into that riddle to the point where you have to start to move away from people that are not thinking like you, that are still doing things that you don't resonate with or don't agree with. And so it becomes somewhat lonely unless you go and then meet other people who are like mind that are doing the same things. And then you realize you're not the crazy one, it's the, the majority that are, because it's not, the majority is not always right, because that's what people think. If there are thousands of people listening to this person, then that person might be right even though they're telling you the wrong information. So churches, mosques are filled with people, but they're not giving them right knowledge, right wisdom, right information. And then you will find where real information is being conveyed, not many people gravitate to it. So they say many are called, few are chosen, or that it's hard to walk the righteous path, or the suratul mustaqim, the straight and narrow path. So that might you know, have something to do with the riddle, but I guess that's something we can ask him to um to explain but we have another call live so please um rahul bat say your name where you are and your question please um respect brother my name is vincent calling from london <clears throat> rahul bat um my question is um what is water i mean water seems to play a very big part in um our existence as human beings, it seems to be here, there, and everywhere, even out of space. Mm -hmm. Could you, sure. you know, yeah. explain? Excellent. Water, water is evidence of life. This is why wherever they explore, wherever they go, the first thing they look for is water. Because once you find water, you're literally saying that there is life. And like you say, when you look at hydrogen, Hydro is relating to water. We are actually water beings. Water is the one thing, as taught to us by Parnabab Janum, the master teacher, that is always going home to itself. Meaning that no matter how you trap, trap water, it will find its way home back to itself. You can put water in a jar and leave it for hundreds of years and you will go back and it would have disappeared. Water is always returning to water. This is the significance of water. We are water beings because we breathe water as what we call oxygen or the air that we breathe. We, as I said before, we drink water constantly. We bathe in water because without water we will, um, we will dehydrate. So water is an example of us in that journey to return back home because water can go from being what we would call solid at its lowest vibration as the ice to being melt down to liquid and then that liquid can be heated where the molecules or the atoms vibrate at such a high vibration that it creates what we call steam or vapor and then that goes into ether so it's returning back to ether and that's how we are. We have slowed our vibration to come into this physical plane. And we are here to learn to raise our vibration so that we can actually return when we shed this skin suit and return back to ether or back to what we term Papa Ut or the all expanding. So yeah, water is, a, is an example for us. Um, water is an example for us because it, it, it can be a tsunami, which it can destroy things, and it can be so calm and so peaceful that when you're meditating on it, um, yeah, you're, 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 you know, it, can, it can be the two sides. Um, I can't see it on here. 
So, yeah, I hope that's answered that question, but water is very, very important. Don't check that one first with this donation. There? No, no, just scroll it. Yeah, that one. Oh, it's the same one from before. Oh, is it? Yeah. I'll give you this one and I'll get the donation. Okay. Okay, we have another caller. We're already running out of... Oh, no, we've still got time. We've still got time. Um, Rahul Bhatt, if you could... Uh, Rahul Bhatt, uh, yeah. Master Teacher, I really, really appreciate your knowledge. I just have um, two questions. Correction, um, I'm, I'm not the Master Teacher. I'm a student teacher of the Master Teacher. Right, the uh, okay, Master Teacher is... Um, go ahead. Yeah, my name is Temi and I'm calling from Toronto. Um, I just have a question, uh, actually two questions regarding like um, a few things I've heard you like talked about in the past. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is about like the planet risk. Um, I know we deal with like a lot of facts with yeah. everything like you explained. Like, do we have like any scientific evidence of like, you know, the planet risk? That's my first question. Mm -hmm. And the second question would be, um, I've been meditating for the most part of like this year. I'm just trying to like understand like is there like any way I can practice like astral projection or like any thing I'm doing wrong because I've been trying it for like close to like a year now because you did mention in one of the episodes that is something we should be able to do at any time we we want to but it, yeah I just was wondering if you can just expand a little bit more on those questions thank you very very much sure yes in terms of planet risk um, okay. Like we say, if you've never experienced something, then you can't, you can't say, okay, it's a fact to, to you. However, there are three main ways to establish something being truth or fact. And that's evidence, obviously, um, reasoning and the experience, like I said. So even though you may not experience something, you're still able to come to a conclusion based on the evidence that's presented um, or you reasoning it out. Um, a simple example is like, if I was to tell you something you've never heard of before, like I said to you, this thing's called fire and it burns. And you're like, I don't know what that is. I could say to you, okay, to show you that it burns, here are some pictures of people that have been burnt by fire. Here's the evidence. This person can, can show you their scars and tell you that they were burnt by a fire. So even though you still haven't experienced it yourself, there's a lot of evidence available that you can say, okay, everyone's saying this thing called fire burnt me and here are the scars and the evidence. You can say, I still don't accept it. And you can reason it out and say, okay, since these people say that they've been burnt by this thing called fire, let me do an experiment. Like, let me get a piece of paper and put this thing called fire to it or some other thing that can burn. And you do it and you see that it burns it, right? So now you've got your reasoning. Okay, that's something that I've done myself. Now, the experience part is to say, I still don't believe that. Let me put my hand in the fire. And you put your hand in the fire and it burns your hand. Now you've got experience. Because you look at it, it looks like the people who were burnt that showed you the pictures of them being burned and their scars. You saw that it burnt something else and now it's burnt you. So you can do that to arrive at a conclusion. Now, when we look at planet risk, we were first told about this. I never heard about planet risk. But by using what's around us, like, okay, what is a planet? And we are on a planet, so we're told. And this planet is called planet Earth. And we accept that. But when you start to study it, you're like, okay, there's, why is it called planet Earth? Because what they're calling Earth is less than what's actually available on the planet, which is water, kind of tying into the previous question. So you're like, okay, so... This is called planet Earth. Are there any other planets? They will tell you Mars, Jupiter, etc., etc., in our solar system. You've never been there before, but you accept that these are Pluto and these other planets exist. So you're like, how do you know? Well, there are pictures. Um, people have taken, you know, used a telescope or whatever, and they say these other planets are in our solar system. And you accept that. So... You've never been there, you've never experienced it, but you accept it based on the evidence that has been shown. So when you come to planet risk, somebody came from there that 
tell, tell, that told us there's a place called Risk, and they described it. They say it has, it's a tri-solar system with three suns, and they give you so much information about it. They wrote books about it, describing it many, many, many years ago, before tri-solar systems were discovered by the Hubble telescope and now the James Webb telescope that can look back into time and look into space and get much more clearer images and evidence. So I'm saying that to say that the master teacher upon the Babylonian told us about these things before they were able to find um, tri-solar systems. And many other things. I'm just saying to you that, yes, then other people can astral project or travel or remote view and they will come back and they also tell you like this is what I saw so um, you don't actually have to accept it that's the thing with us we don't say you should accept something based on belief if you don't think there's a, a planet called risk and it doesn't exist you're welcome not to accept it now for us for me having been around and studying the master's works for so long and seeing that it's really about defining truth. Do you trust this person by way of what they have done and delivered, not just by lip service? And I have been studying everything he's ever said and written, and every time it has come to pass, it's always been accurate 100%. So when he tells you of something, you can choose to accept it or not accept it. But those of us who know and feel it, um, we accept it. So... Yeah, that's Planet Risk. Um, the second part was, um, what was the second part? I've just, I've just forgotten it. I gave so much information about risk. Um, oh, I can't remember. If you, if you can type it in the chat, I've forgotten. If someone can remind me what the second part of the question was, we'll come back to it. Okay. Okay, that's why I got so many. Oh, there we go. Okay, wanna appreciate love your donation, Gen B. Um, oh my goodness, you're in tune with me. Can you speak on mainstream satanic organizations, Freemasons? Wow, that's a lot. Can you speak on it? Yeah, um, I can speak on it, and it's actually so timely because right now um, I mentioned that we. We're in a year, 2024, it's a year that many things are going to happen. And the Satanists um, are actually really back in power. Um, and, you know, we're going to see a lot of different things. This is why when we talk about us as sentient beings and beings that have been awoken and the master teachers here and we're not able to come together and unite as we're supposed to quickly on the scale we're supposed to, um, we are allowing this world to be run by these Satanists, as you put it. Um, and, and so if people don't wake up quickly and start to realize these, you know, like, for example, you have, you have a church, the Church of Satan, which people that practice Satanism can belong to. And many people that you wouldn't even think of, like, for example, um, Mick Jagger was a part of the Satanic Church or the Church of Satan by Anton Levy or Levi. Um, and this was, in, was set up in 1966. And he was sanctioned or given the sanction to do that by President Reagan. And um, a lot of this, what you're calling Freemasons or Illuminati, um, they belong to these orders. So you have the small group of people that run the world, like the Bilderbergers, they, they have meetings in the Bohemian Grove and, you know, they, they, they have that big hour. You know, Alex Jones exposed this some time ago. And they meet and they, they talk to their, who they call their, their God, but it's really the Satan. And um, they basically get power and, um, and people that belong to these groups you know, they carry out lots of rituals and certain things to, that we've, we've seen it exposed in the music business, in the entertainment industry, because you get initiated and you get put into these, you have to do certain things. We've heard many stories, people will say conspiracy theories, but 
um, if the people of the planet, of the world, who are vibrating on the positive energy, on, you know, raising their vibration so that we can counteract, um, you know, these demonic forces, these antichrists, um, you know, if you look at people like Hitler dealing with, being, you, know, you know, Nazis and, you know, I say that because some of the actions that he took in terms of the gas chambers and killing people and so forth, it was something that till this day, you know, it's something that um, the Jews don't like and they, they obviously go, uh, you know, they, they go on and on about it. Same thing with mass genocides all over the world with the wars that are taking place with Africans that have been killed and to the point where you've seen such injustices on the planet and um, you start to look at who's running the world and who has the power to, you know, to do these things and you'll start to find there are many, many organisations um, that unfortunately control the world and they utilise tools such as entertainment, such as religion, such as, um, you know, many of these, as you say, these, these Illuminati organisations to run the world. And unfortunately, um, people are waking up. You've got gangs that are not going to put up with certain things that will fight back. Um, it's such a good question. I'm trying to give you so much because it's a lot. And, um, you know, you start to see the wars that are going on and how they can escalate. So, yeah, you said speak on mainstream satanic organisations. The best thing to do is develop yourself through Wusabat to get that protection, to share the, the good news of Wusabat, to free the master teacher, Pana Babi Anun, because this is why he's been incarcerated for actually calling up and putting out books you know, um, I have to show you a few of these books because these are the books like Leviathan 666, which has four parts. This is part one of four. And, you know, these books expose these organisations. These, and another one called the Lucifer and Conspiracy, where you're dealing with people that um, worship Lucifer and they pretend and act like, you know, they are expecting or worshipping or, you know, they're good people, but really they're not. They're actually fooling you by, um, you know what I mean, being Satanist. So it's a big question. And um, I just want to thank you again for that, for that, um, for that gift. And um, yeah, join the Telegram group and we can, we can continue. We have another caller. Rahubat, greetings. Greetings. So once again, I, uh, this is Brenton uh, Crimson. I was in a chat earlier, just giving you another call back and I had another question. Sure. All right. Uh, with everything that is currently going on in the Middle East, um, we see tension starting to spark. Uh, to me personally, I feel like we're already just at the beginning stages of World War Three. But what, if anything, um, is going to be the catalyst? Like, if you were to have, if, if you had an opinion or if there's any foreknowledge, what would be the catalyst that would actually spark this age-old war over religion that is taking place in the Middle East? Excellent question. It ties in from the previous question. Um, it's already started happening. And, you know, you have to look, when we say war, war is fought on many different levels. Um, there's spiritual warfare, there's mental warfare, there's physical warfare. And as you see in the, the actual, the wars are taking place right now with, you know, you see the, 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 the Russian and the Ukraine war um, and obviously Israel. Um, and they're fighting over territory to take control, to have land, um, you know, and when you start to look at what's really happening it's a very serious situation um and you know scriptures talk about rumors of war and armageddon and all these kind of things so yeah it's already started um with you know the the people that are in control and in power right now they're able to just push a button and um nuclear weapon and people are very concerned right now and and um 
it's already started and, and you will see that with, you know, um, certain antichrist people that are in power are going to escalate this. Um, there's talk of separation, segregation and people being um, like the immigration, you're dealing with, you know, people that are going to be, yeah, I mean, I was even just listening to the, you know, the politics and the, um, we, we're not really involved in the politics, we're just giving information for educational purposes and, you know, if you look at some of the policies that are, you know, people that have won the elections are saying they're going to implement, um, it's going to get very dangerous because, you know, there's talk of people don't like the whole abortion thing. Um, people are going to fight back against that. You you have, um, you know, things like deportations are going to take place. Um, people are going to fight against that. There's just going to be divisions and wars based on people saying, you know, you you have a border, you can't come into this territory, this land, and or we're going to go over there and wipe people out to have land so that we can rebuild um, temples and, you know, things like that. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. Um, the focus for us really should be to get the master teacher partner Bab Yanun out because he has the solutions for a troubled world and that's part of the reason for exposing these, as I said, these um, principalities in higher places, these lunaries, these Luciferians, these um, Satanists that, you know, they worship Satan, but, but most people don't realise it because they've got everything back to front. They have you worshipping what you consider or think is God, but it's actually the other way around. You're, you're worshipping the devil and the devil has no allegiance to anyone but himself, you know. So um, I hope that's given you something, but there's more to come. We'll be doing more, um, obviously, lives and join the chat and we can continue the conversation. All right. Um, so many questions. Oh, OK. The Cali completed... Um, what I asked, um, I mean born in a complete ammonia sac, which is not broken. So after birth, they had to cut the sac to get me out. If there is any spiritual explanation to it, as it is so rare, it is called Enkau. Okay, I've heard of it, um, or other people also going through a similar experience. Um, I, I can't really speak on your personal situation, um, but what, what does relate to that is when we say that um, humans are reptilians and the female is a reptile as well, in the sense that if you look at reptiles, most of them, they lay eggs and then the eggs are then, when they crack or open, um, you see that they come out of that that same sack that you're talking about, what happened is that the female, instead of like a hen or a chicken that sits on the eggs and incubates them and wait for the right time for them to hatch and come out, the female does this internally. So it's like she has, you're in an egg as well. And if you look at an egg, it's an enclosure and, it's in, and you're inside water. And this is why when that egg hatches, um, we say that the woman's waters have broken and then you come out. But in rare situations, you come out before the, the, the hatching, if you like, like how an egg will come out and then hatch and then the, 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 the fetus will come out. So it's, very, it's a very rare thing to happen, but this is, this is like literally how reptilians or reptiles lay eggs and then um, you have that sack of water that you're in when you're a baby. So that's what I can relate to that. Um, but it is a very unusual occurrence, just like even with twins, you know, that um, that's a rare occurrence where even though one sperm normally will get to 
to the you know to the ovum um, in rare occasions you have two and even then you have you have uh, identical twins which is also separate from um, the other type of twin which um, the name escapes me right now but the, these are things that used to happen but now they're, they're very rare so you know it's special in that way that it's very rare that it does happen nowadays all right um Gen B again it seems many people don't realize that the so-called perks of joining six ether run secret societies are trinkets in exchange for having their soul exactly this is what we were saying because these dark forces when you start to look at the chain of command in terms of the world leaders this is why I um, I pulled up that book of Leviathan 666 because the master um, Pranabab Yanun went into that many, many years ago and you will have puppets or the world gov governments that are controlled by someone but ultimately they answer to, like I said, these small groups like the, you know, the Bilderbergers and then they meet in the Bohemian Grove and certain decisions are made and these people communicate with these dark forces or these extraterrestrials that give them the power to control and rule the world so you're right when when you start to look at um secret societies you know there's a hierarchy and you climb up and they test you and the more you pass you know doing the things that they ask you you get introduced to more and more of the sinister agendas and things like that and we can hear from you know just what's been going on with the whole Diddy scandal with the different um, you know I mean things that are coming out the things that we're doing it's, it's very um, yeah dealing with a lot of dark forces because this is how they they um, lure you into the into the city for world to basically become a tool for them to utilize to gain and steal souls um, so yes, again, you've said a very, very important thing there. Um, okay, someone's just responded. All right, let's keep going. Oh, look at that. It's like everyone's on this um, bohemian thing because, um, yeah, do you know about the dragon? Yeah, why the owl? Why, why the owl, the big owl? Because the owl is, is used as a symbol for... If you look at the owl, is if not the only bird that has eyes facing like how humans have eyes the front, not to the side, and it turns its neck 360 degrees. Um, it's nocturnal. It's supposed to see in the dark, so it's utilized, you know, to be a symbol of these people that are all seeing that um, they run the world. They see everything 360 degrees. They control everything. That's why they use that that owl um, and look out for the signs and the symbols okay we have another caller Rahul Bhatt caller Rahul Bhatt, Rahul Bhatt uh, so I was concerned about this is Kaiser and I was concerned about uh, Elon Musk and I know, have you watched the movie I Robot? Yes. You know, with his Tesla robots. Yes. So uh, he claims we will all have no uh, need for work or we will have um, an abundance of uh, goods and services. But he says we won't have to worry about goods and services. Then he said, but he'll think that uh, something like uh, what would our purpose be because robots could do your job for you and another thing is is do you know if Trump is he part of a Knight of Templar I heard that he's a Knight of Templar and that he's a nomos being meaning the nomos are extraterrestrials so that's a lot but yeah three things are yeah important. Uh, yeah I definitely <laughs> will um, try and remember all of those questions and unpack them for you yeah, the iRobots. Um, when I saw Elon Musk's robots, I actually went back and rewatched the iRobot movie. 
And they're literally the same robots. This is why we're saying that when people say, you know, um, how is it possible that things so long ago are happening now? It's because, like we say, some of these beings are able to travel to the past and to the future. And, um, yeah, in terms of, you know, having robots, and, and ironically, um, he is now, as you touched on the Trump, Trump uh, administration as well, they're trying to give him a job and um, part of a job in the administration. And I saw, I saw a podcast with him and um, he was saying that these robots are ready to roll out next year. Um, and as you say, pretty much 80% of jobs are going to become obsolete because robots are going to be able to, um, you know, do those jobs. And, and when you start to look at that picture, a, a robot is, a, is something that is programmed and it has no emotions and no feelings. So, um, uh, you know, when, when these robots start to be in positions for, let's say, for example, if they were replacing <laughs> the police, they showed you this already in, I, um, what's that other robot movie that came out? Um, I can't remember, it was, not Iron Man, but there was a robot movie as well where, um, gosh, I can't remember it. But yeah, um, it was the one where it was a human, but he, he was, a, I think he was in the army or something. And then all he had was, I think just a part of him left and they made him into a robot. Um, I can't remember the name of that movie. But anyway, getting back to the iRobots, um, these robots are not gonna be able to listen to any excuses that you will have. If, if there's a border, for example, and you can't get, you're not allowed to cross the border, the robot's not gonna let you through. They've, you know, America uses a lot of drones and um, in terms of war now, I was saying in the other question that people are thinking war is just physical, but it's drones, it's, it's using the internet now. So, um, yeah, um, in terms of Trump, yeah, he's, He's right at the top when you're saying uh, Knights Temple and all of that. He is now the person that, you know, is on, is on top. Because if you look at America being the, the power of the world, um, and he's right at the top. So, you know, yeah, what you're saying is he's actually higher than that, the, the, the Knights Templar. Um, okay, next caller, please. Rahobat Sikhan. Uh, my name is Shane. I'm Rahobat, how are you doing? Um, I am I'm doing great. Um, much love, love the content. Um, two questions. So, two. are there any scrolls on the power of names? Um, I'm mm -hmm. asking this because I got my firstborn on the way and I'm not quite sure, like, oh, what wow. name you yeah. know, to bestow. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the master says, whilst the children still being born, there's still, there's still hope. So, yeah, um, congratulations. Um, bring him up in Wusabat straight from the get-go and all will be good. Yes, we do have a scroll called the Book of Names um, because people may be using slave names or using tones and vibrations that are not really conducive for you. So um, until you're actually able to go through initiations and receive a name the book of names allows you to to look at the names read them look at the meanings and select a name that resonates with your character and your nature um, and a name that you can live up to because names are really titles um, and those titles is something that you don't just you know you don't choose a name that you can't live up to so that's a you know good way but yes we do have a book called the book of names that we have available. It's funny, somebody else actually asked about that today and I was going through that with them. So we can get that to you. If you're not in the Telegram group, um, join the Telegram group so that you can ask your questions and um, we can then you know, send you the links to the book, etc. All right? Much love, much love. Mm -hmm. um, second question, if I could just squeeze it in real quick. Sure. Um, is is the devil an external being you know so like i have a little bit, a bit of uh, an issue like focusing when i hear about the devil so right. i was 
brought up thinking that the devil was, uh, you know, a bad guy, yeah. you know, outside of me. But is he inside or outside? Excellent question. Um, that's that's the trick. When you use the devil, it's like a, a, a definite article, like there's only one. But um, there are many devils and... Um, that devil has got into our nature as well. This is why this whole concept of good and bad, the duality of positive and negative. Um, but yes, there is a physical devil and physical children. You know this because in Genesis it says that he will put enmity. This is the God, the loving, caring God. He's going to put enmity between the devil and the woman's seed. And when you look at the word seed, that's dealing with zera, with zera which means literally like sperm or, or seed. So there are physical devils that have been born by way of other devils. And you only have to look at the actions of people. Now, the, there are many books the master teacher put out called, um, that deals with this devil thing called Where's the Devil Today? One of them. Um, are there black devils? Um, there are many scrolls that deal with the word devil and the devil is, is really dealing with the actions and the things that one does which are devilish. So anyone who behaves or carries out the actions of a devil is a devil by that Turkin. But the person that people are really referring to is Nana Sin because it, in the in the um, Cain and Abel story he said that sin lies wait at the door, right? And that's a person. That person is Nana, right? And, and this is the person that anyone who is going to be initiated into that order is going to be under Nana. So um, that's the physical devil. And if you, Nana is the son of um, Enlil. And in the scriptures, whether it's the Sumerian scrolls or Sumerian doctrine, it talks about, you know, there's two sides. You have Enlil and Enki. And that comes all the way down into the, the brothers that keep fighting because in order to have division and competition, you have to have two sides that are against each other. So that same Enlil and Enki story can be related to Patar and Beth stories, um, Jacob and Esau stories, and it's all about and God and the devil story because that's what ultimately goes back to. So the devil can then come in many forms, meaning like it can come as a job, it can come as a grant, it can come as a business, come as a, a university degree, it can come in in the internet, it can come in in many many forms to basically trick you to to go into the sixth ether um, vibration and to act and behave like a devil. It can come in the form of a party, a beautiful male or female. Um, that's why you always have to be centered in your square to know the technology and to be able to pick up and know good from evil because that's what they said that once their eyes were open, the Adam and Eve in the garden, they were able to know good from evil. So this is what it's about. It's about you being able to discern and to know truth from falsehood, good from evil, or you know what people call good and bad. But it's really about knowing agreeable from disagreeable and aligning yourself with the agreeable side more than your disagreeable side. And that, that's got into our genetics. This is why you can't be good all the time in that sense because you need that other nature to be able to deal with disagreeable beings or people that come at you with a certain nature. But you're not the aggressor, you're not the, the person that's going to start the evil, but you have to be able to defend yourself. Yeah, thank you, um, Programmed by Society. The owl is called Moloch, and that Moloch ties back into, in the Bible, when they're talking about Malik or these 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 um you know these beings that are, are they call their rulers all right and then um yeah so and trump's son someone's saying here two tears in a bucket trump's son is alien 
tall and genius, smart, apparently, laughing out loud. Yeah, in fact, um, people have said he's one of the 13 sons that were, was born to, to, to Satan and um, Damien. You know, in the movie Damien, if you start, watch that movie Damien, I think there was like Damien 1 and 2, um, Rosemary's Babies. These movies are things that actually happen. They talk about the Dakota House in New York and, you know, how when this child was being born. The movie tells you um, you had dignitaries, the Pope and certain people that went to, um, to, to see this, this child. So, um, okay, here's another question, Pharaoh. Rahubat Yasa, I shook, I shook, I shook. I shook right back to you, Farun Nago. Um, question today is, is Farna Babianun also the author and writer of the books, the introduction to the nature of nature? Absolutely, he is, yes. Um, he wrote on the different pens, pen names, and um, one of them was Afro Uno, and yeah, that doctrine of the nature of nature, which today is being broken as na um, natural ether energy and dealing with, yeah, natural nature. But um, yes, you're correct, 100%. Um, great question. Um, the robot already said, as I can upgrade myself, humans should be worried. Exactly. Um, there are so many movies that have prepared us for this robot um, take. Even if you go back and look at the Matrix movies, they were telling you that right at the beginning, it tells you what happened. It was when the robots took over. You look at um, the Terminator movies, they're talking about the robots. iRobot, we've spoken about. Um, I can't remember that other movie for some. Robocop, that's it. Thank you. I'm trying to remember Robocop. And um, Robocop, obviously, is telling you about the type of cops you're going to have in the future. And, um, yeah, and, you know, when they take over, we're in trouble. Um, yeah, um, this, this question from Young Crawford. Greetings, do crows have anything to do with death? A month ago, there were a lot around my house, even on my roof. Then a week or two after my brother-in-law passes, was that a sign with the crows? Um, obviously, I can't talk about your personal situation, but they do... Um, depict crows in movies, even in the Damien movies, as I was saying, they use the crows a lot. But I, I'm dubious when they use black um, in a synonymous way with evil, because that's also programming in the sense that why do people wear black to funerals? Um, more people turn up to funeral because they're glorifying the dead. Dracula wears a black cloak. Everything that is even if in the movies, it's like they try to make black bad because of, you know, so they will use like um, white doves to, to, you know, to say that's purity and so on. With, you know, with the baptism, when John the Baptist was um, baptizing Jesus in, in the River Jordan, you know, it was a dove. And so I'm saying I'm dubious when they're using black, even witches are like, Black, but we know that a lot of that goes back to to Wicca, um, the Druids. These are the, these are where this evil and the, the even the music when you start to tie it back to like the Beatles because they they were Druids as well and they practiced Wicca and Wicca is what metamorphosized into what we call Christianity today. So yes, um, I can't say specifically in your situation because you saw the crows that. That meant that in ancient times, um, vultures, because they are, they used to eat dead flesh, so you would see vultures obviously around. But yeah, as opposed to whether um, you know that your particular situation had anything to do with the crows, I cannot say that definitively. Okay, um, we've covered the question on names already. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, God made the devil. Uh, the question but who made God excellent point because your the term God is very limiting and it's it's just that it's a term that was made by man and the man gave God life because without the books without the language 
where would you get that term from? So until somebody put that word in a book, it did not exist. And now all of a sudden, everyone talks about God, 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 because you've been told in a book by somebody that wrote the book. Don't you see how the spell works? So whoever wrote the book, who came up with that word, is the creator of God. All right? It's like saying um, the word the devil. If somebody didn't create that word, who created the devil? That's an English word that was created, right? So somebody created that word, and now there's this thing called the devil. But if you took away that, it would be natural nature and things working in nature that someone may consider bad and someone else may consider good. That's why good and bad is so subjective. It's based on what's the situation, what's the circumstance and why is it necessary. So for example, natural nature will say that certain species become extinct at a particular point because there's a chain of life where everything relates to everything. So there has to be death to be life. And when you consume stuff, you then produce manure. That manure, where there's animals or whatever goes into the ground, that then recycles life. And so there's a constant cycle of what people might consider good and bad. So the seasons, like you will have what people will call cold and then you'll have hot. The other two in terms of the, um, the seasons, are just variations of the two. There were only originally two seasons, hot and cold, because the planet needs to be cold on one side whilst the other side is getting heated and then it has to cool down. It's a constant rotation between the two sides. This is why um, life is really cycles or circles because you start at one point and you eventually come back to that point and you can go from hot back to cold and cold back to hot. You know, you can go in either direction. And so it's a continuous cycle in, in variations and not linear. Like you just start here, um, um, alpha, and then you go here in the omega, beginning and end. It's like there's no such thing because energy does not die. You cannot, you cannot destroy it. So all it does is it transforms and it keeps transforming. All right. I believe people can hear my thoughts. Is it spiritually possible or am I losing my mind? Could it be a curse or awakening or what? That's from um, Lost Tones. No, that's why I explained before that thoughts are actually tangible, right? They are a vibration. They, are, they have a color. They have a weight. They have a frequency. And you, you just have to tune into that frequency. Even as I'm speaking now, these are just tones and vibrations that because you have tuned into those tones and vibrations and you've been taught that this particular word makes this sound and that sound means this, you're able to hear me and communicate. However, you can do that mind to mind so people can reach thoughts um, when you've elevated to that point. And it's a, it's a matter of learning how to, um, like a radio station, tune into the right vibration, right frequency, and communicate. It's like um, if I wanted to communicate with you with a walkie-talkie, we have to be, we have to go to a particular frequency, and then we're connected, and then we can communicate. And the radio, when you tune the dial, you hear static as you're going through the different frequencies until you tune into a particular frequency that's broadcasting on that signal and you, you, you know you can then listen in or receive that information so you're not losing your mind it's more about learning how to control your mind all right because if if you couldn't control your mind to tune it to a particular frequency imagine you could hear a million voices all at the same time and you can literally go nuts and there's a movie called um i think it's something like what a, how, what a woman thinks or something where the, the guy has an accident and then he can hear what women are thinking. And there's another one with a woman that can hear what men are thinking. And um, it can drive you know, you nuts if you could hear everything at once. So you have to be able to block the ones you don't want to hear out. Um, 
do we have an... Hmm? What's it called? What Women Want. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, so tune in. We give you lots of movies. Remember, on the chat.co.uk, um, we have a lot of movies, a list of movies on there. Um, I watched one called Levels recently. I think that's on Net Netflix. That is quite good because it kind of explains the different levels of existence in what um, the different matrix. Um, don't want to spoil it for you, so watch that for yourself. Um, another one is Bliss. If you haven't seen Bliss, watch Bliss. Um, again, that's a very good movie. Okay, let's see how we're doing with these questions. Rahubad Yasa Nafir Nhut Ashok Yasa. Okay, um, which calendar you're using, Anuki? Okay, so um, that's a good one on the calendars. So we're currently in the Gregorian calendar. This is what I'm saying about circles within circles. A lot of people think we're in um, today's what are we? What are we in? Is it November? <laughs> yeah, we're in November, right? According to the Gregorian calendar. But you have other people that have different calendars, like the Mayan had a calendar, the Chinese have a calendar, the Hindus have a calendar. We have our own calendar. So we're now not in 2024. We're in 6024. All right. So, yes, um, we have our own calendar and, um, you know, we, we do things according to our calendar. All right. So um, that's a great question about the calendar. Um, okay. Okay. The live is ending soon. Yeah, we've only got 15 minutes. Wow. These lives go so quickly. Um, religion comes from the nomos. Yeah, that's, that's, again, the Dogons talk about religion because, you know, um, but religion literally comes from the Pleiadians. But um, in different cultures, because they were visited by their ancestors or different extraterrestrials, such as uh, the Nomo in, you know, with the Dogons, um, and that the hat that the, the Maita is called, the Pope wears, is a fish. And um, it's talking about coming from, from the waters onto land. As we were saying before, water is very important and we all come from water because water means there's life. Depending on the type of life, it could be microbacteria, but it's still life forms. All right. Do you have any advice um, to people who experience advanced technology attacks or mine weapons? Uh, yeah, this is again called cool. we 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 teach people or the master teacher has taught us to have something called um, um, psychic self defense. Remember that you can protect yourself with the shield that you have around you and the frequencies that you have around you to vibrate at a, a, a level where. Um, certain frequencies cannot penetrate. Um, the simple way of kind of really explaining that is how Dr. Sebi taught you that you can have your body in a, in a state that is alkaline where acidic beings that thrive in an acidic condition can't live or survive. So when you have your body like that, diseases and dis-ease can't thrive you see so it's the same when you take that outside your body to your aura and to your energy field where you can protect yourself by way of psychic self-defense which is the way your mind is <clears throat> excuse me the way your mind is thinking is creating that shield around you yep so you can protect yourself from certain vibrations and frequencies you can use crystals and certain things that deflect or reflect um, harmful frequencies. All right. Yeah, um, your mind is the most powerful weapon when you say advanced technology attacks or mind weapons. 
because your mind is the most powerful thing. And don't lose your mind, like the Master says, mind your mind for the jewels of your soul. Uh, okay, what is the difference between the black nobility and the Moors? Is there a difference? There is, um, but however, just to cut to the chase, it's all about being in Musabat, Musbatu, because this Moors and trying to claim and ask other people to recognize you and give you something is in a way submitting to them. Because if you need somebody else to give you acres and a mule or recognize you, it's like, so if they don't recognize you, then don't you recognize yourself? You know, and, um, you know, um, there is a big difference in terms of that because there are different types of Moors. They don't really have much control or power today. Um, in fact, the fact that you had all these rich people like Oprah that was um, back in Kamala and all these rich celebrities, you know, the fact that they still didn't win shows you that it's really about they still don't recognize you as Negroes, as Negroes, as anything, you see. So it's not really about trying to get crumbs from a, a, a loaf of bread when you actually own the whole planet. And, um, you know, like I've mentioned many times, like when you look at where the resources that the world is run on, the gold, the platinum, the silver, the cobalt, the oil, where is it mostly abundant? It's in Africa. And um, if we would only listen to the teachings of the master and um, work together, come together and develop and build and have our own stuff, um, like the Wakanda in the Black Panther movies, you wouldn't really be looking at um, <laughs> trying to get crumbs or be accepted or be a part of something or somewhere that you will never be fully accepted, you know? Is there a scroll that explains how to connect with our ancestor through our ancestor's altar? Absolutely. We, we, we have scrolls. That's a very important point. We have updates, right, which come before sometimes being compiled into the book form and you get information and rituals and things to do and how to do it with the right tones and so on. So this is why we keep expressing, come on the inside, um, be a part, work from the center out, not from outside in. So you can, be, you can be given the correct information. But yes, we definitely have a lot of scrolls. Join the Telegram group. We keep saying that because the conversation carries on and you can get links and you know, things are shared with you, etc., etc. All right, we'll so back to the future, but remember, do you see yourself in that future? We have to make that future. Without, with or without us, we'll so back is the future. However, if you want to be in that future, then transform. Um, be a part of we'll so back. Let's get the master out. And when I say that, it's by whatever contributions you can make, because as I said, right, we have a, a Wusabat blockchain. Everyone that is vibrating on that conscious level on Wusabat are mind-linked, and we have a master secret that goes into being mind-linked, because like I was saying about water, we're connected wherever we are on the planet, and as long as we're thinking and have that vibration, that positivity, positive energy and our thoughts are on getting the master free, we can actually bring that to life. And you can contribute by way of you learning the doctrine and learning the information, sharing it and teaching this doctrine of love and unity that will always transcend falseness. Truth will always win over falseness. So when you're living in truth, teaching truth, building communities, contributing to the financial aspects of our building, helping with the legal, sharing the knowledge about the master teacher. All of this helps us work and grow together in Wusabat. 
All right. All right, let's see what else have I got. I have a question. Wu Sabat is not based on belief. I have a question on Wu Sabat. It's not based on belief. What proof do you have of ancient scripts, i.e. Anunnaki, etc., are about extraterrestrials? Do you have factual proof to support this? Okay, I mean, how do you know anything? I mean, when people ask um, questions, sometimes you're like, okay, the information you have right now on anything that you subscribe to or accept, how did you come across that information? You had to be taught that information by someone or something or through some book, right? So it's no different with any other subject. When we talk about Anunnaki, there are people that are specialists, have studied it, have gone and done research, found things, and it's recorded, you know, like the, the tablets, the, there are many artifacts, you know, you got a call. A, a viewer's got a question. Okay. Have you seen the movie Invasion of the Body Snatchers? I have, but it's a long time ago I saw that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, again, that's an excellent movie because it, it goes into the skin suit thing because, you know, um, there are so many movies you can literally name hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of movies that talk about this. Um, so yeah, when you say, how can you prove it? It's like saying, how do you prove Egypt existed? Um, you go there, you look at the pyramids, you see all the mummies and the things that have been found. And um, many scholars, people that study will tell you that's where it was. Um, the same with Sumeria, it's ancient Sumer, it exists. So how do you know anything? You look at what has been presented, you use evidence, reason and experience. And um, how, how else are you gonna know anything? You have to study, research, and also with yourself, your being. Does it make sense? Does it resonate with you? Uh, can your dreams sometimes predict the future? Yes, sometimes you travel, in, you travel to the future in your dreams. Um, the master teacher, this is from Tiana Bassett. You travel to the future, but he says that you can lose time in your present life. But if you travel to the past, you don't. So yes, people do travel or you can get a vision in what people call a dream that gives you knowledge of things that are going to happen and then they happen. There are many people who will tell you, I, I do it. I see things and sometimes, you know, um, tell people things that, and it happens, you know. So there are many people that can predict um, what they call the future because they've been there and seen it and come back. It's called time traveling. Um, Mm -mm -mm. Will or when will we be able to go to the planet we are from? Again, this is what Wu Sabat is about. It's about teaching you to prepare so that when people think, <laughs> you know, they make things into a joke. Like the master said that, you know, this is real. You're going to live to see these, these crafts and these things that are becoming more and more commonplace. And when it happens, people are going to be like, but people are seeing crafts now. Um, all, my, all is mine, the universe is mental. Absolutely. Um, thank you for taking the time, but your thoughtful reply didn't answer my question. Amara, what was the question? Um, if I can remember, that, if you can remind me of the question, because uh, what is the difference between the black nobility and the Moors? Is that the question? Is there a difference? Um, if that's the question, then um, let me know what, what, what you mean then. What, who are you referring to as the black nobility? And maybe we can carry on and expound on, the, um, on my answer. Question, is life in alignment with Wu Nuwap? Wu Nuwap, Wu Sabat, that is life, yes. That's... Um, Oh, sorry, Ife, I thought he said life. Yes, um, Ife, that's just um, the part of Wu Sabat, but it, 
if it does not replace Wu Sabat, it's just that that deals with animus, I mean, animism, which is we in Wu Sabat, if we had to say, you know, what people are saying, what is your religion? Because people always say like, you have to have a religion. It's animist, being animist, practicing animism, which is the respect and the knowledge of nature and how nature works and how we respect and give reverence to nature. However, it has been desecrated too by way of influences by other people, namely um, religions and, you know, Arabs and so forth, where it's now not being practiced in its pristine way that it was. You may find ancient cultures that still practice it in the proper way, but however, um, it is, is animism. In that sense, that's how we relate to Wu Sabat. Um, yes, thanks to Kham Sanan Manthu Hatat, the US government confirmed the existence of UFOs in June 2020 after the master teacher had been talking about it for 60 years. Exactly. You know, there's so many books that he put out. Mission Earth and the Extraterrestrial Involvement. Is there a, um, is there a God? Um, is God an extraterrestrial? Um, you know, you, are there UFOs in your midst? Um, mystery clouds, are there UFOs? There's so many books that he put, A Man From Planet Risk, um, so many scrolls that he put out way before. And then people were saying that, you know, he was crazy. And, um, but he knew, he said, in time, you will all see for yourself. And we're now seeing it. Um, so... <laughs> Some, um, Andy, Andy Ro, Rojo, Rogo, he says, uh, do you believe in the simulation theory? We don't deal with belief, and simulation is not, a simulation is not a theory if you really bro break it down, um, because things look like they exist or in the form that you think they are, but when you start to break them down, Things are not solid, for example. Things look like they're solid, but they're not solid. So when you break it down, you're really looking at an illusion. Um, so <clears throat> um, when you say simulation theory, um, you know, we are actually fractals because we know we are composed of different parts and um, these parts are in different vibrations. So. Let me keep going. We don't believe and we don't deal with theories. All right. In the book, Dr. York versus the computer, the master teacher talks about the beast being a supercomputer. Is it the same as the devil we are all talking about? Please talk more about this. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so <clears throat> in that book, the reason the master was talking about it being a computer is because that computer was the computer in Belgium known as IBM 366 and the computer was being programmed by somebody and this is one of those 13 children that were born as we say um, to, the, to the, one of the devil's children and that computer became what we call today the World Wide Web. And when you look at www, it, it goes back into zigzag zig. It ties into vi vi vi, which is six six six. It's what now the web is synonymous with what a spider does, which is throws a web to catch his prey. And through the computer now, everyone is connected to it. And by way of the internet, you can do everything online now, which is banking and there's a lot of pornography and a lot of negativity on, on, online. And so, yes, that computer ties into the network of computers and that computer was being programmed and these supercomputers are what is running the world today and everyone is linked by it. And um, we just went on to talking about that's developed now to what we're calling AI, artificial intelligence and to these robots now that are being run by AI, 
most of the, what we're doing here is possible now because of the internet. And um, we know we have all these mobile phones and smartphones. So everyone now is connected to that, to that devil, that programming, but it's about, do you let it control you? Do you use it for positivity or do you use it for negativity? Yeah, so that's what he means when you're talking about Dr. Yours versus the computer in that book. Yeah, the beast is actually a supercomputer. How are we doing? Wow, we've come to the, that's gone so quickly. Um, any questions that we haven't answered, um, we will c continue the conversation in the Telegram group. We will, um, you know, maybe next week in the live continue if we didn't answer it. So please make yourself available in terms of connecting with the community wherever you are connecting with us remember the online course is there for you to to do in your own time at your own pace you help us in fact there's one last question i want to address before we go i saw a comment where somebody was talking about um well two comments one of them was talking about why do we charge for the books now we give out this knowledge for free, as you see. We've been doing videos after video. We do these live calls. We take questions for free. People choose to donate to help us because we would like to do this, you know, literally all the time. However, we do have lives and other things to take care of as well. And books, the knowledge is free, but the paper, the printing, the proofreading, the typing, the compiling it is not free. And, you know, so we have to build as well as a community. And if we don't have economics and produce, how are we supposed to do for self? How are we supposed to be able to support ourselves? So this is when people ask questions like, why do you sell the books? Well, I don't know anybody else who puts out material in terms of a book producing it um, that just gives it out for free. You know, go to the Amazon. They give out Bibles and Qurans for free because most people know that information is already obsolete and outdated anyway. And it's part of bringing you into the spell. So that was one comment. And people that make, you know, these silly remarks and comments about the master teacher, they clearly haven't taken the time to do their research to really find out who it is and to study the case and to research and see that the same devil that you're saying is a devil, is, is the same person you're going to say when they do devilishness, you're going to somehow listen to them. But if you look at Cointel Pro, look at how all of, not just our leaders, but anyone who teaches truth, exposes truth, um, exposes lies with truth, how they're dealt with, even down to the Jesus. He was telling the truth and telling people how to live, treat other people the way you'd like to be treated, um, turning over tables in the temples. You know, he was teaching truth and what happened to him? Look at Gandhi, look at Martin Luther King, look at um, Malcolm X, look at Noble Drew Ali, look at Marcus Garvey, you know, look at Nelson Mandela. We can keep going on and on and on. Any type of fight for liberation and salvation, it's not going to be met with, you know, it's by the adverse forces. They're not going to just allow it because it means they won't have control over the people. So I hope that um, that's clear. If not, we don't shy from any questions. That's why we say, ask us anything. But, you know, we, we also can see through the crap. So we won't entertain it if it's just a waste of time or just like a distraction. So we're going to say, um, Ashok, 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 which means divine love, um, Wusabat is the future, Wusabat to the world. And um, until next week on the next live, we see you in the Telegram groups or on the online courses. All right. Much love to everyone. Um, without you, there won't be any us. Contribute, help us so that we can keep giving you this content. All right. Wadu.